Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to the video. Uh, as always, I hope everyone's keeping well, fit and healthy. Uh, so as we all know, or as many people will know, the Ironman Middle East uh, Championship has just taken place in Israel uh, yesterday. Uh, well, yesterday for me at least, maybe the day before that for, for other people in different parts of the world. But nonetheless, uh, Patrick Lang or Langer has won and uh, today we're going to be dissecting his run why are we dissecting his run well essentially obviously it's always difficult to compare run courses between ironmans to compare overall courses and then actually make accurate comparisons of times between courses obviously because you know there's different conditions even the same course on the same day uh, or on a different day i should say is going to be vastly different if it's the winds changing it's raining versus sunny hot versus cold etc right however patrick lang or langer uh has just broken the course record for an iron man run so 42.2 kilometers and in a time on the actual result list of two hours 30 uh 32 seconds so two hours 30 minutes and 32 seconds and we're going to analyze this run uh for some context i've got the rest of his times here so for his swim 49 minutes 09 he was the sixth fastest male pro he had the ninth fastest bike time he came in in a group he came in fourth into uh transition two with a time of four hours 16 minutes and you know coming to transition two he was essentially about eight minutes down on the the leaders or at least the lead guy so you know pretty significant time gap to be chasing down but nonetheless uh when you run a two hour 30 32 on the official results list obviously you know, maybe it's a little bit short whatever um you, you kind of put yourself in a pretty good position and what's also quite incredible here is that the first or the top four guys that you know one two three four in this race all went sub two hours 40 so inevitably or obviously i guess it's a very fast run course but nonetheless uh let's have a look at his run and a little bit of the stats surrounding it so two hours 30 and 32 seconds on the official list if we look at his strava um he's got a distance of 41.85 so that indicates depending of course where he started where he finished obviously that will play a big factor but then as well you know the satellites can obviously um always get you a few hundred meters out over the course of a full marathon right so how accurate this is um we're not sure but if we take it as uh, gospel then it was a little bit short right so 350 meters short because it should be 42.2 kilometers nonetheless a moving time of two hours 31 minutes and one second for an average pace of three hours and 36 per kilometer so on the official results of course though it was faster and uh that indicates maybe started a little bit quicker uh or a little bit before the actual run started running out of transition or he just took a little bit while a little bit of a while after he finished to actually stop but uh this time here 230 32 puts him at a uh in fact a 335 per kilometer pace so overall you know really incredible and if we look at the fastest run course or the fastest run times has ever been over the course of an ironman this goes back to i forget exactly what race whether it was texas or one of the other ones in the states from memory but it was about two hours and 34 minutes so he's done officially a two hour 30 marathon so you know taking some, some substantial time off that obviously always context this is the first time this race has ever been run and potentially you know in the future runnings of this event uh if it's done in israel on the exact same course with very similar conditions maybe we'll even see this go quicker but we know that uh, patrick langer super strong runner and an incredible run nonetheless so let's go through through some of the stats um so his weight 64 kilos very light he would have burnt a, a total of six uh, 17 beers uh, so very important knowledge there 2616 uh, 17 calories now it's a little bit um for this analysis in particular there was no heart rate data so it's obviously nice to always see the heart rate but some athletes will choose to use it some won't and others will choose just to not upload the heart rate data for any reason but uh regardless let's have a look at the overall run so we can see the course here if we play it through you'll be able to see you know this line from start to finish going up and the exact kind of course that was went through so beginning here 
it was basically out and then a little horseshoe back, but obviously multiple kilometers in that. So out, back, and then out a little bit more, and then back and two, two, three laps, three laps of that. So um, going through his actual splits, uh, kilometer one through 41, you know, very, very consistent. This is where it's really impressive. Um, really no decline in performance at all. So three hours, uh, three minutes, sorry. <laughs> I always do this. Minutes versus hours. Three minutes, uh, 24 per kilometer for the first one. Uh, and then a 326 minute, a 336 minute, uh, three minute 40, three minute 34, three minute 31. So, you know, gone out pretty hot. Um, and then just really maintain this, you know, the slowest split that he had on his Strava. Here's a three minute 43 here. Um, a few is a 340, 341, um, but very, very consistent, 342, and then even like dropping down now, 321, you know, all the way through, and 354 here. Uh, so that I believe that would be his slowest split on his uh, data. Um, so the course itself, um, not, not by any means, you know, flat, um, definitely undulating. And pardon me. You know, we can overlay the cadence here. So, you know, very consistent cadence, no real drop off. In, if anything, kind of picked it up at the end. So it was going, starting off, you know, in the 170, mid 170s up to 180. Uh, and then, you know, kind of holding that through through the finish. Um, and another interesting thing, you know, we can go through the analysis and check this all out. Obviously, this is information that's available to anyone. You can always go and have a look on Strava and, and see this for yourself. So this is his pace analysis. Um, overall, it, it looks like a very big variation, obviously, in this blue line that we're looking at here. But it's only going from uh, 3 minute 29 up to 3 minute 46. So there's only, uh, what's that going to be, 17 second difference. Uh, and really, you know, if you can do all your kilometers splits in a marathon with only a 17 second uh, difference, that's very impressive. Um, cadence, obviously, this is probably coming down. Yeah, this is coming down the hill here, a little bit of a lift. But again, the cadence is very consistent. Max 180, average 177. Um, and then estimated power, which we can't read too much into because power on the run, um, obviously, it can be recorded if you have the device, but like like anything it's kind of compared to the bike it's not all that um it's it's insightful but it's it, it's not like to the level of the bike and also this is just estimated based on his uh pace so we can't read too much into that uh but then we go into the peak pace and this is again very very impressive you know uh 400 meter but like the, the actual fastest paces he went over the course of the whole 42.2 kilometers through 400 meters he went uh well, through one 400 meter segment, he did a 306 uh, minute per kilometer. Uh, his fastest one kilometer average was three minute uh, 13 seconds. Uh, five kilometer average, three minute 30. So, you know, just a lazy casual uh, 17 and a half minute, five kilometer, uh, 10, and then 10 kilometers, three, uh, 333, uh, and then 13.1 miles. So the half marathon, uh, 334. And what we can do as well is look at the actual uh, splits between the first half of the race and the second half. So uh, if we go and we have a look again at the overall distance, so it was 41.85 kilometers. Uh, so half of this is going to be 20.9, uh, ish, you know, 0.925. Uh, I think that math's all right. So 20. Point in in the realm, call it call it twenty one kilometers for ease of the analysis, or just under. So we go through twenty one uh, in this top right corner here. So twenty one kilometers, or twenty point nine kilometers, even better. Uh, one hour fourteen twenty nine, uh, and then through his finish here. Um, hold on, where were we? So. 19, 20.9, so 114 and a half, call it. And then overview was 131. And the official time was 230, 32. So 114 and a half, if we were able to double that, 
uh, well, one fifteen doubled would be a two thirty flat. So really only, uh, and of course, this is very difficult to kind of measure off just the Strava data alone uh, officially. But uh, nonetheless, you know, just in in a ballpark, it would have been. He's only basically added another in the realm of a minute to between one and two minutes into that second kind of uh, half marathon, maybe more accurately in the realm of about 90 seconds to the half marathon, uh, the, or the final half marathon. So very uh, consistent splits, um, almost an even split. And yeah, I think extremely impressive. Again, we, you know, you can kind of go through all these laps. I'll actually, what I will we'll do is link the actual Strava activity so anyone can go and have a look because uh, it's super impressive and just the consistency between these splits. Again, you know, um, very rare to be holding or, you know, finishing on a, a three minute 15. But even in these last kind of 10 kilometers here, 330s, 340s, 340s, only one 350 here, maybe going through an aid station uh, and then 340s uh, and 330s. So yeah, super impressive run. That's Patrick Langer. Uh, or Patrick Lang, however we pronounce that one. So, uh, you know, the German athlete, uh, very light, very good runner, obviously two-time Ironman Kona World Championship winner and uh, now setting an official Ironman run overall time record, I guess. Not a course record, but an overall time record. Uh, but again, we need context here. It's only the first time this was ever done on this course in Israel for the... Um, Middle Eastern Championships. But I think we can all agree that, you know, to come from eight minutes down and with the top four all going under 240 to still get the win in a 230-32, even if it was a little bit short, really, really impressive. Because even if you extrapolated that out, it's still only going to add a minute at most, 90 seconds probably. And uh, and then you're, you're still going far, faster, faster than anyone's ever really ran in an Ironman. So, you know, we know it's around 234. You know, you're still going to be under that. So uh, Patrick Lang, very, very, very incredible run performance. And I hope you guys enjoyed that kind of little bit sort of scattered breakdown or analysis and leave any comments, opinions. What do you think? What do you think of the race? I would have loved for there to be coverage of this. Obviously, there wasn't. Disappointing. I think I mean, could be doing a bit better with their coverage. Um, but we are lucky to have the races that we do have being covered uh, nonetheless. And that's that. So take care, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one and I will see everyone in the next video.